Thank you to all you guys for being here. This is uh, this is a world premiere that you're about to experience here. This has never been seen anywhere before um, beyond the edit suite. Uh, basically, I was contacted by On six months ago. Um, one of the athletes that they sponsor had had a terrible accident, and it wasn't. Uh, known whether he'd come back, how he would respond to his treatment, and so they wanted to document that process of recovery, which is what I've been doing for the last six months. So last, this, just weekend just gone, I was in Boston for the marathon, and it was very, very, very wet, and very cold, and uh, I don't think I've ever filmed in so much rain before, actually. Um, but anyway, I was there, and that is going to be the culmination of the film. You're not, you're not going to see the Boston portion, because that hasn't been edited yet, but you're going to see everything up to Boston. So, um, it's 23 minutes long, and I'm going to be biting my nails as we watch it from the back of the room, because I haven't seen it on a screen like this before. Um, and then I wanted to share a few thoughts afterwards, um, things that I've learned on this journey. So I hope you enjoy it and um, I'll be back in 23 minutes. <laughs> Three-time Olympian, four-time world champion, and the current Ironman world record holder. That's what I do every day, seven days a week, 12 months of the year, since 1997, until very recently. very quickly share a few, uh, well I, I was actually on the train from Boston yesterday sort of reflecting on my experience of the last six months and it's been truly inspirational to be in the presence of Tim and kind of observing this recovery and so yeah I just, I just jotted down a few thoughts and um, I want to share them quickly with you and then if you guys have any questions about him or about um, what, what his time was in Boston, or anything like that, then I'd be happy to, happy to answer them. Okay, so the hardest thing in filmmaking is deciding a title for your film. So I came up with this snappy title for my, uh, my presentation. Uh, okay, I realized this on s Sunday night. Um, in the hotel in Boston. When I used to live in London, I worked with a lot of bands making music videos, and that involved going out late at night a lot and drinking a lot, and it was a very unhealthy lifestyle. And working with Tim is quite the opposite. So it was in bed by nine every night and getting up at six in the morning. And uh, yeah, just being around that kind of energy I found really, really inspiring and really helpful. So, yeah, my life has become much healthier in the last six months. Um, so, you saw him briefly in the film. There's a guy, Pat, who's a, also an Ironman athlete, who, when I interviewed him, said, he said, Tim's dying to get out there, dying to run, and he can't because of this thing on his, on his, around his neck and his head. Um, and he was saying that he was reflecting and he thought, well, what's my excuse? You know, when I wake up in the morning and I'm like, oh, I don't want to go on that training run. What's, what's my excuse for not doing it? And I, and I came away from that and I thought, hmm, what's my excuse? And I didn't have one really. <laughs> so, so, uh, so I've started running again. Um, and uh, I can now do 5K in 25 minutes. So. Uh, I, I just 
just thought that was great. What's my excuse? Um, this, this whole process, watching, watching Tim set goals that seem to exceed everyone's expectations. I mean, when he first suggested running the Boston Marathon, everyone thought he was crazy. Um, you know, he was still in the halo when he actually came up with the idea, and it just seemed impossible. You know, it seemed crazy that within six months of having a broken neck, he'd be running a marathon. And um, it's amazing watching how having that goal helped him and kind of spurred him on. So, uh, yeah, his new goal is to get back to Kona, and not just to get back, but to try and win. You know, I think he feels cheated by by this experience, and so his unrealistic goal is he's going to get back to Kona in October and he's going to win. So, I, I hope I'm there to, to film it. So this is, this is something that I'm really fascinated in as a filmmaker and as a human being. I, I, I'm drawn to characters that have this capacity to turn adversity or turn really difficult, challenging situations into something positive. Um, I think I'm somebody that would tend to say, it's too hard, I can't do it. So watching these people uh, take this, this, this incredible amount of um, difficulty and turn it into something good, you know, turning, making the best of a terrible situation um, is something that I've, I've taken away from this experience with Tim, but also I've been drawn to in, in all of my films, I guess, looking back. Um, I think that that is the most inspirational thing that we can do. Okay, I think this is my final one. Yes. Um, so I'm really committed to telling positive stories. I feel as though we're kind of drowning in bad news, whether it's plastic microfibers in the ocean or you know all this crazy stuff that's happening in the world i feel like we need to inspire each other to kind of get out of this situation that we're in so i'm i'm really committed to doing that and um uh yeah that's it really <laughs> so the film, the finished film with the Boston segment, is going to be released online on the 28th of May. Um, that's the day that Tim broke the world record last year. So it's one year on from his world record um, time. And so that's the website to go to. And please share it far and wide when, when it comes out. And then I wanted to give a very quick plug to myself. Um, so I run, I've, I've got like a weekly documentary club called 52 Docs. And there's a couple of 52 Docs people in the audience. Um, so yeah, every week I, I select a documentary and people can watch it or not watch it and then share their thoughts on our Facebook page. So if you're into documentaries in any way, sign up at 52docs.com yeah. and then I'm my Instagram is Pilgrim Films. And that is it. So I don't, I don't, I'm not quite sure how much time I've got, but I'd be happy to answer any questions if anybody has any. How did you film the running parts like in the end? Were you in the running The running parts, like, no, actually, somebody, I, I, I got a friend to do that. <laughs> I was in a car, filming from the car, like, with, with the, the, the trunk open, like, filming out. But yeah, she had a GoPro, she was running with them. She's a much better runner than me. Yeah. I'm sure you saw many breakdowns while you were I think what I realized is that he has an extraordinary amount of focus and dedication. And I mean, that the early, the early breakdown where he sort of becomes a bit tearful on camera, um, it was hard to get him back to that place because he's very stoic about it all and he's very humble and he doesn't want to make a big fuss about it all. So 
Um, yeah, he. I, I mean, I didn't. I didn't see him break down again after that. So I think. I think for him, he's so focused on step by step by step by step, just getting better, getting better, getting better, getting better. With this, with this goal in mind of, I want to be the best in the world again. And I think the fact that the top, that the, the, the clock is ticking in terms of his age. He just turned forty a couple of months ago, and I think he feels like it's now or never, and everything has to line up. Um, and we need some luck, so we'll see what happens. I was in Boston as a spectator, and I've run before with one of the worst races from a headwind perspective. I saw his time, which is incredibly impressive, he's like top 300 at 245. Um, but he went to the half a uh, little bit fast. Can you talk about his uh, experience over Boston? His experience in Boston? Can you repeat the question? Yeah, sure. So this gentleman was a spectator in Boston who saw Tim's time. So Tim had set out, Olivier, the, the, one of the founders of Bond, said, if you break 254, I'll give you $1,000. Wow. Which you might be regretting now. <laughs> Tim, Tim ran 249.42. <laughs> which is pretty, pretty amazing. And, and as he says in the film, he'd never run a, a standalone marathon before, which seems kind of incredible, but you know, normally he's swum 2.1 miles and biked 112 miles before he runs a marathon. <laughs> so, uh, um, but his experience of the race, I mean, you were there, it was so cold and so wet, and when he crossed, I was sort of following, following him on my, on my phone, I wasn't able to film the actual race, but when he crossed the finish line, he was, his teeth just wouldn't stop chattering. He was so cold, he was like shivering so hard. And we went back to the hotel, he had a hot shower, we climbed into bed, and his teeth were still chattering for about 15 minutes after that, because his, his whole kind of core was freezing, I think. So, um, the next day, he was sort of reflecting on, you know, I think, I think for him, he said that this is, the, this is the end of his recovery period. I think now he feels like he's, he's back in training. So he's got six months before Kona. And so I think for him, Boston was like a full stop at the end of that recovery period. And now he's looking forward. So he, yeah, he's very business-like about it all. He's like, great, did that, 2.49, onto the next thing. And then the next morning, he went swim training. So, uh, he's, he's incredible. Awesome. Where's one of your unreasonable goals? I'm going to win an Oscar. <laughs> well, I'm, I'm serious. I really, I am. I really am going to win an Oscar. Um, so, so I, I made a film called Tashi and the Monk, and a short documentary Oscar, that's, that's the category to go for, that's the one you can get. <laughs> and, um, and in order to qualify, your film has to be under 40 minutes. So I made Tashi and the Monk 39 minutes and 45 seconds. <laughs> and I was like, right, we're going to win the Oscar. So it didn't sadly win the Oscar, but I won an Emmy, so... <laughs> And then if you don't quite get there, you still kind of end up with some good stuff happening. So, so I don't think this will win an Oscar, who knows? But um, yeah, watch this space. Any more questions? How, how did you meet Tim? How did I meet Tim? Yeah. Um, well, it was really at the invitation of Ollie. Um So his manager, Franco, who's in the film, is just a really lovely human being and, and said, you know, this is going to be an amazing story of his recovery. We need, to, we need to get a filmmaker to come and to come and document it. So I, it's actually a production company in London called Hungry Man, who've worked with on before, and I know the producer. Bizarrely, we worked on a sausages commercial six years ago. <laughs> like Rich, I'm I'm actually vegan, so I hesitate to. Uh, yeah. I hesitate to use the word sausages, but um, uh, so 
that's how I met the producer. And then, yeah, he knew that I was in the States. I live in Portland. And so he got in touch with me. And, and so I flew down to Boulder. And I mean, Tim is exactly as you see him in the film. He's just a very genuine, down-to-earth, nice person. So, you know, I, I met him, we had coffee, and then pretty much immediately started filming. Cool. Well, thanks so much, everyone. Thank you.